I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Blackstone Griddles, but if you're not, you probably haven't walked around the campsite very much because almost every other camp uh, campsite and RV out there, they have a Blackstone Griddle on their tabletops. So I figured, why not? Let's give it a try. I'm not really sure what to expect here in terms of packaging, but I'm hoping there's really not a whole lot of assembly required. So here we go. Pull it out, nothing else inside the box here. So let's throw this styrofoam back in there. And it looks like I have it upside down, which may be fine because it looks like we have four small legs on here, which is all that's really required for assembly. And once they're on, um, other than plugging in the propane, we should be ready to go. Flip this on over. And guess what? I was wrong. I did not have it upside down. Okay. Okay, so here we go. We got our griddle, which comes off, and it looks like this is just going to sit right in the openings here, but we'll put this to the side for right now and get these legs attached. Okay, so we have something here. Let's see what we got. It looks like we have a grease drip pan with a liner, which you can get these uh, pretty much anywhere that where they sell grilling supplies. Um, this actually looks like it's a it's a Blackstone brand, but it looks like you could probably get like a muffin pan or. Um, a baking pan that would fit in here as well. Um, what I like to do is I sometimes I will line these with aluminum foil then you can uh, reuse the pans but that is just being a little bit thrifty. Um, obviously the easiest thing would be to just replace it. Okay we have four legs that need to be installed and these are um, pretty simple. You have a, a nut and a bolt on the end of the leg. You Started. Let me see if I can show you in here. Um, there are four holes, and each leg will go into one of the holes. That you can just put that in there and tighten down. And I think hand tight is probably just fine for this. So, other than the base and your heavy, this is the, the majority of the weight of the, the package that you get, the Cookstone, the Blackstone uh, griddle, um, there's really not much more to it other than putting on the drip pan, pan. And then here we have the propane adapter. Now I know one thing you can do is you can get an adapter where you can connect this to uh, a regular 20 pound propane tank if you don't want to use the small little bottles or um, have to worry about refilling them or a lot of those are disposable so they do create a little bit of waste um, but uh, for now I'm just going to go ahead and use the adapter I do have a 20 pound bottle that we'll give it a try all right so if I were to read the instructions it would tell me exactly where this is intended to be installed, but as any good RVer will do, you can typically find this out on your own. And um, the adapter here is pretty straightforward. Um, here on the end of the unit, you have a little uh, male section here where it was covered, came with a little 
cover on it, you just put on the female adapter. Make sure that it seats in fairly well. Okay, so once you kind of get that pushed in and stuck down a little bit, you can go ahead and just screw on the compression fitting, which if you get it nice and tight, you can rotate this exactly where you want it. And there you go. So we have the propane connection adapter on, we have the feet on, and now we are going to go ahead and install the griddle. So the backsplash of the griddle obviously should go towards the back. And let me show you this quick. If you look at the openings on here, you'll see that there are kind of like that picture frame hanging um, opening. So you can put it on and push it back to lock it in place. And that will be helpful when you're grilling and you're scraping the griddle that you're not pushing it off of its connection to the, the unit. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this installed. So they just fit very snugly into those holes and I'm trying to figure out if this should get pushed back any further. But it looks like that just um, sits where it should. Other than that, we can go ahead and take off the graphic cover. We have our complete blackstone griddle. We have the grease pan, which should connect right out off of the back here. If you notice on the back, there is a little indentation here. So as you push the grease and all the, the stuff that you're Scraping off of the griddle towards the back, you can push it right off into this grease pan. Okay, so here we are. Let's just go over really quick um, what we have here. Um, when you unpack everything, you're going to get two pieces. You're going to get the main base and the griddle. The griddle just sits right on top of the main base. There are small little openings with little feet that just sit right in there. And then the only other connection that you really have to do is put on the propane tank. There is a male, male to female screw on connector. You don't need to use any type of tools. Hand tied is perfectly fine. And then if you get the small propane type bottle that you can get um, at any um, Walmart or camping store, you connect that right to it. Um, as I mentioned, you can also get an, an adapter where you can connect this to a 20 pound tank if you want. So to ignite this, you have two burner and um, the propane tank is feeding two lines that come in. You have one section over here and the other section on the other side. Okay, so just to give you a little sense of how this works. So once you go ahead and connect your propane bottle, you have these two knobs on here. This knob, on, or both knobs on each side, will control the propane burners of the units. You have two different propane burners. So if you only want to use half of the griddle you can, or if you want half of the griddle to be on high and the other half to be on low, that's perfectly fine. So to ignite it, which is pretty simple, just like any grass gas grill, you hold in and push in on the knob. Once you turn it a little bit, you'll hear the propane start to release. And then once you go through that click, you get uh, ignition. So if it doesn't light on the first try, just go back and forth a few times and then you can do the same for the other side. Okay, so we have ignition here and we'll go ahead and throw our griddle back on top. Okay, get our grease trap back on there. And here we are.
we have a nice hot griddle. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna let this heat up. Um, and one of the things about letting a black stone or any type of any type of um, cast iron uh, pot that you have is to get it nice and hot and you can season it. And we'll be back to talk about that in just a moment. Now that you have everything assembled, the next step in getting your blackstone up and running is to go ahead and make sure that you season the griddle. Just like any cast iron pan that you have, to get the best performance out of it, you wanna go ahead and make sure that you season it um, before you use it and then after each use. Blackstone actually recommends in the instructions to go through this process at least three times. Um, this will provide a nice, easy seasoning for your your grill and for the griddle and will also help you when you're cooking to prevent any sticking and once you do this you'll appreciate that you went through these steps several times to make sure that you have a properly seasoned griddle now seasoning is really straightforward all you need to do is take any type of oil um, i have uh, vegetable oil here you can use any type that you want any type of cooking oil um, and go ahead and just spread a little bit on the griddle. Now Blackstone, for safety reasons, will recommend that you use some type of um, instrument to apply the oil to the griddle. But if you are careful and you just use a piece of paper towel, you can go ahead and do this pretty easily when the griddle is hot. So you want to make sure that you coat the entire surface of the griddle when you're doing this. Don't forget the back splashes and all the edges. And you don't need a big pool of oil on here, you just want a nice thin coating. And what you want to do is you want to see the griddle start to smoke. Once the smoking stops, then you are done with this aspect of the um, the seasoning. And you want to repeat this step three times at least. And the more you do it, it won't hurt it, but at least three times is um, necessary to kind of get a really good seasoning on the griddle. So what it's doing when you season it is you have this oil on the griddle. As it heats up, it opens up the pores in the metal and will allow that oil to soak into the metal and become part of the, the griddle itself. And that's what provides that stick-free coating um, on here. And it's, it's a great coating because it's um, repeatable. If you have a griddle that becomes a little bit sticky, you can go ahead and clean it up, scrub it down, use a little bit of sandpaper, bris bristle pads, whatever it is, get that metal to a bare state and then re-season it and re-recoat um, your griddle. So if you're watching this, you may be able to see the smoke rising from the griddle itself. Um, this is exactly what you want to see. Once the smoke stops, then you know that that oil has penetrated the griddle and you can go ahead and repeat, repeat the process, um, as I said, three times. So this is the first time that I'm doing it here. You're seeing the griddle get nice and hot. Um, we're going to let it keep going until the smoke stops and then we're going to go ahead and repeat. All right, so it was about maybe five to seven minutes until um, the oil stopped smoking on here. So that means that we're ready for our next application of oil. And we want to do this, as I said, three times. So just a little bit of oil will be enough. Um, and then you just want to take it and just spread it evenly a thin layer, like I said, you don't need a big pool of oil, but you just want a nice thin layer on the entire griddle. Make sure you get everywhere on here into the corners. Be careful if you are not using any tongs or anything to stand between you and the paper towel, because this griddle is extremely hot. So just rub that in. And since it's already hot, it's um, smoking immediately. And you're just gonna repeat this. So we're gonna do this three times. Let the smoke um, die out. And then we'll repeat it one more time and then we should be good and have a nice seasoned griddle. So 
One thing that you'll that I love to cook on uh, cast iron is bacon, and bacon grease is an excellent sealant, and getting that natural oil into the griddle really helps to get a nice non-stick surface. So um, when you're cooking, if you have grease that's coming out from burgers or bacon, um, let that stuff burn off on the end and scrape off all of the material, and that will just add to your seasoning over time. Okay, so we have gone through two steps of the seasoning process so far. We're gonna apply, apply the third round of oil. Again, just rub the oil evenly across the griddle. And you just want a thin coating. And the great thing about using a paper towel is that it will absorb some of that oil when you're spreading it to make sure that you have a nice even coating. So there we go. We'll let this burn off and then we should be just about ready to start cooking. Okay, so we went ahead and we are starting to get our meal, our first meal, on the Blackstone griddle together. We just have some uh, potatoes, onions, salt, and pepper. Just put this right on here. And we're just going to let this go for a little bit and keep mixing it up. Getting some nice um, crispy edges up, edges on it. One thing that we'll likely want to do, um, and you may want to do this, is to have some water. We can just get a little bit of steam action going in the griddle itself. But we have some other items coming up. So we have some Italian sausage and Brussels sprouts. So stay tuned. Okay, next we're going to add some of our Italian sausage to the griddle. And this is going to be just like any other grill that you use. And one of the things about cooking on a Blackstone griddle, you have to kind of plan your um, additions. So things that are going to take a little bit longer, you want to put on first. And things that are going to get done pretty quickly, you want to put on last. And then up next we have some Brussels sprouts that we're going to put on. And together that will make a nice meal. Okay, here we go. We got the potatoes going, the sausage going. Now my assistant is going to dump the asparagus on. Not asparagus, Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I love Brussels sprouts. All right. You want to say goodbye? 